Hello everyone, Professor Scaly here. Hope you've been well as of late, and welcome to part two of a video that I made nearly two whole years ago. A long while back, I made a guide on every enemy that was currently in the game, going over their statistics and general information on how to deal with them more efficiently. But ever since that video was released, another nine new enemies were introduced to GTFO. And since the game reached its conclusion with Rundown 8 and no further major updates are planned, it's about time I go over these new enemies. Just like I did back in part 1, I'll be showing enemy stats like their health, how much damage they do, as well as a few other things, and of course I'll be sharing information on their general strengths and weaknesses and what's important to know about them. Now, if you haven't seen my first enemy guide where I go over the other 20 enemies of the game, I highly recommend you go watch that first, as this video is only going to be covering the enemies that were first introduced with Rundown 7 and Rundown 8. So these are enemies you're only going to be seeing much further into the game, which of course means I'm going to be showcasing major late game spoilers in this video. But preface and warnings out of the way, not much else to say, so let's start analyzing these brand new threats. Starting off, let's go over the two enemies that were introduced with Rundown 7, the first one being the Snatcher. Snatchers have a total of 225 HP, and when it comes to dealing damage to you, they're unlike any other enemy. They don't try to hit you with their fist, or shoot you with projectiles, or their tongue. Rather, they'll run up to a person, open up their chest, and tentacles will reach out and grab the person and pull them in, and then they'll run off with that person. And while you are trapped inside the Snatcher, you're incapable of doing anything, and you will take damage over time. If you're inside a Snatcher for the entire duration, you'll take a total of 17% damage. However, you can get out early, either by having your teammates shoot the Snatcher and stagger it, or even just full on killing it, in which case, Snatcher will drop you early, and you'll take less than that 17%. As for its weak spots, it has a 2 times damage multiplier if you hit it from behind, and these things typically start appearing in C tier missions, although in some of the alternate rundowns you can see them a bit earlier. Now when it comes to dealing with the Snatcher, in of itself it's not that big of a threat. If the Snatcher is the only thing you're trying to kill, it's pretty easy to deal with them as it'll run away for a while, come back, and then you could just shoot from a distance, and even if it does grab somebody, 17% damage isn't all that much. And the Snatcher does leave itself pretty vulnerable while it's grabbing that person and then getting back down on all fours and trying to run away. And while it's running away, you have a very easy line of sight to its back for that juicy 2 times damage multiplier. However, if you're on your own and isolate from your team, Snatcher can be pretty annoying as there's a good chance it will just grab you before you can really do much to it. Because its head region is actually immune to damage, so trying to shoot these things from the front if you don't have higher ground can actually make it so most of your shots aren't going to do any damage whatsoever. So the best way to combat against a Snatcher is to stay at least in groups of two, and also have weapons that can do a lot of damage very quickly things like shotguns or the scatter gun, because you can very quickly kill these guys while they're rearing up to grab somebody, or again, after they grab somebody, start running away by just pumping a few shotgun rounds into it. But be a little bit careful because if you shoot too much, there is a chance you might accidentally hit your teammate as they're getting dropped off. So make sure you're doing damage quickly, but don't be too trigger happy, otherwise you might be killing more than just that snatcher. The other enemy introduced with Rundown 7 would be the Immortal. Immortals have a total of 1 billion HP, which means there is no actual way to kill these guys. When it comes to their other stats though, they will do a total of 32% damage if they melee you, and 14% if they hit you with their tongue attack. Weak spots, they have none whatsoever, and the only time they really appear in the game would be inside of R7E1. They do technically appear a little bit in Rundown 8, but that's a bit of a special scenario. Now, since you cannot kill the Immortal, the only way you can really deal with it is by distracting him. And that's how you play R7E1. You just simply have three people do whatever they need to do, clearing out zones, grabbing resources, or whatever it is, while one person is distracting the Immortal the entire time. And even though it is quite similar to that of a tank, it does have a few key differences. 
specifically, it is nowhere near as aggressive, so it's not gonna be rushing you down or trying to lick you from 10 miles away. Rather, it'll kind of just awkwardly walk after you as long as you keep line of sight with it. And if it does happen to get a little too close, then it'll try to lick you. Or if you get a bit too far away from it, it will pick up the pace a bit. But once it gets a bit closer, it will once again slow down. So the easiest way to deal with them is just have one person who is designated to deal with them and just keep your distance. Make sure you don't break line of sight because if you do, there's a chance he'll go after somebody else on your team and he'll run off pretty quickly. But just find a good area where you could kite around for quite a while and just keep backing up without letting him actually get any cheap hits in on you and just distract him until your teammates need you for something else. When you do get to those situations where you all have to stick together, then the best thing to do is just deal with any of the other enemies that are alive because those you can actually kill and then when it comes to the immortal just make sure you're not getting hit by him left and right keep some distance between you and him and if you do have to stand in an area try to get behind a structure or something or maybe just have one person face tank a little bit of his tongue attack that way he's not running up and trying to melee everybody while they're standing on a security scan with the two rundown seven enemies talked about let's now go over the rundown eight ones starting off with the zoomer scout Zoomer Scouts have a total of 33 HP, they deal 4% damage with their projectiles, I believe they'll shoot them out 3 at a time. They have a 2 times damage multiplier if you hit them to the back, a 3 times damage multiplier if you hit them to the head, and a 6 times damage multiplier if you hit them to the occiput. And because I got asked this a lot in my first enemy guide, the occiput, for those who are unaware, is specifically the back of the head. As for its first appearance, it will first appear in Rundown 8B1, and you can see it in a few of the levels afterwards. Now, when it comes to dealing with Zoomer Scouts, it is quite similar to that of a regular Scout, but there are a few key differences, which some make it a little bit easier to deal with them, and some make it a little bit more challenging. The first key difference is the HP. A regular scout has 42 health, but Zoomer Scouts only have 33, and because it's 9 HP less, it's easier to kill it with certain guns, as you can maybe go for a front of the head shot instead of a back of the head like you typically would have to, and even your melee weapons have a little bit of an easier time, or at least one of them does, and that would be the bat. With a regular scout, you have to do a fully charge hit to the back of the head to kill with a bat. But with zoomer scouts, due to that reduced HP, a fully charge hit to anywhere on the head will kill it. Knife players, you're still going to have to go for the back of the head, but just slide right into it as you stab and you should be good. The other things to take note when it comes to differences is biotracker tags only last on zoomer scouts for 30 seconds, unlike normal scouts which is 60. And the big one you really want to be careful of would be those tentacles, because I'm sure there are many of us out there who love to just run through regular scout tentacles because we're going up for it, we're going for the melee hit, we're going to touch some tentacles, we might even try to touch as many as we possibly can, and if we time it right, we might even hear that sweet little whipping sound effect that tentacles do as they come back in, but hey, we land the shot anyway, scout's dead, we don't have to worry about it. Trying to pull that off though with a zoomer scout is a lot more dangerous, because regular scouts, once you touch a tentacle and it turns red, it takes one full second before the scout goes immune. Zoomer scouts though, it only takes 0.3 seconds, one third of the time. So if you touch a tentacle and it turns red, you either better be about to melee it, or you better have a gun in your hand that you could very quickly shoot that thing in the head and kill, otherwise it's gonna go immune and let out that scream and spawn in some enemies. So when it comes to dealing with them, because they love to crab walk around and they can actually be pretty quick and they love to turn around a lot, I would say try to take it a little bit slow. If you are somebody with the knife, the best thing to do is just run up on it while it's walking around, do a fully charge hit and slide into it and just stab the head as you're sliding to get that clean kill. Other melee weapons, you kind of rush up on it and just hit it on the head or let it come to you. Just again, be aware that the moment you touch a tentacle, you need to kill it quickly. If you want to, you could always just simply shoot it. Just be aware of the other enemies that are in the room that are going to wake up because of your gunshot. Throughout this game, we've seen quite a few different enemy variants, and with Rundown 8, we got a brand new one. The first one on the list being the Nightmare Striker. Nightmare Strikers have a total of 37 HP, they deal 16% damage with their melee, and they can punch you a few times in quick succession, they deal 8% damage with their tongue attack, and they have a 2x damage multiplier both to their back, as well as a 2x damage multiplier to their tumors, which if you do hit them in the back tumor, you get both damage multipliers. As for their appearances, they first show up on the scene when it comes to R8B1, and they'll show up in a few other missions afterwards. 
Now, Nightmare Strikers. If you recall way back, I said Chargers were pretty much a regular striker, but even better. Nightmare Strikers are effectively Chargers, but even better more so, because these things are absolutely terrifying. Not only do they have more HP than that of a regular Striker, even more HP than that of a Charger, but they can dish out a lot of damage quickly. Making an exact comparison to regular Strikers, normal Strikers have 20 HP, and their tongue does 12%. Nightmares have 37, so almost twice as much, and even though their tongue attack does 4% less damage, they can actually punch you for 16, and if they get right on top of you, it's quite easy for them to punch you two, maybe even three times within the blink of an eye, and if that happens, you're taking 32, potentially even 48% damage. And that's only accounting for one of these things getting on top of you. If you get two or even three right next to you, you could be at 100% HP and you might be flat on the floor before you even know what hit you. That's how dangerous these things could be in larger packs. And to make things even more terrifying, if you're someone who figures, oh, no big deal, I'll just stagger them and keep them at bay, well, unless if you have a Hell Auto Pistol or some other gun with a ridiculously high stagger multiplier, I wish you luck, because these things have a stagger HP of 20. Most other enemies, like Strikers or Shadows or even Chargers, they have a stagger HP of 5 or 6. Giants have a stagger HP of 40, so these things are about half that much of a giant, but four times more than that of a regular striker. So you have to put a whole lot more damage into these guys to even get them to stagger in place, and they don't stagger for that long. If you're dealing with just a couple of Nightmare Strikers, it's really not that big of a deal. You kind of just treat them like regular Strikers. Big difference being that since they don't have a head, you're just aiming for the tumor on its stomach instead. But if you have to deal with an alarm that's spawning in a lot of these guys, or you wake up a room that has 10, 15, or even 20 Nightmare Strikers in it, you need to keep your distance. Keep falling back and deal damage to them from afar, and having weapons that can pump out a lot of damage quickly, or pierce through enemies, or stagger enemies like crazy, are the best type of guns to have when it comes to dealing with these guys. We had Nightmare Strikers, so of course we also need to have Nightmare Shooters. Nightmare Shooters have a total of 18 HP, they deal 5.55% damage with their projectiles, and they can shoot out multiple in one go, they'll deal 12% damage with a tongue attack, yeah, weird that a shooter variant actually has a tongue, but we'll roll with it. And when it comes to their weak spots, they have a 2 times damage multiplier to their back, and a 3 times damage multiplier to their tumors. And just like Nightmare Strikers, they first appear in R8B1, and whenever you see Nightmare Strikers, more often than not, you'll see some Nightmare Shooters with them. Now, Nightmare Shooters are kind of similar to that of regular shooters. They have a bit less HP. Instead of 30, they only have 18. However, a thing to keep in mind is that regular shooters have a pretty high damage multiply when it comes to their head. And because Nightmare Shooters don't have a head, you don't have that damage multiplier. And while the damage multiplied to the tumor is quite nice, it's not quite as much as it is for, again, a shooter to the head. When it comes to dealing with these guys, you could pretty easily melee kill them, just like regular Nightmare Strikers. Best thing to do is either try to hit them from behind or hit them to the front tumor. The back tumor, of course, is the absolute best as you get both damage multipliers. Another thing which I did not mention with Nightmare Strikers I should mention here is that these tumors are the same as like the ones on Birthers and Tanks. So if you have a gun or melee weapon that benefits from a precision damage multiplier, you do get that with these tumors, which actually makes it so the knife can pretty easily deal with Nightmare Strikers and shoot if you hit them from behind in those tumors, but if they wake up, best thing to really do is either go in and melee them if there's only one or two of them, as you could pretty easily stab it or hit it in that front tumor before it has the chance to lick you, but if there's a pack of four or five or six of them next to each other, I'd recommend stop meleeing and start shooting, because even if you run in and melee kill one of them before it hits you, you might get tongued by the other ones as their tongue attack is pretty quick, and getting hit for 12% by four or five enemies is gonna rack up pretty quickly. And that's really all there is to the Nightmare Shooters. Scouts are a type of enemy in this game that I've never really feared all that much, but this one right here is the big exception to that rule, and that would be the Nightmare Scout. Nightmare Scouts have a total of 161 HP, although, like Birthers and Tanks, that HP is split between its two tumors, the one on the front and the one on its back. Each tumor has roughly 81 HP in total, and if you hit them anywhere on their body aside from those two tumors, you deal, I believe, 75% reduced damage, so you definitely want to aim for their tumors when trying to kill them. 
As for the damage, they do 4% damage per projectile, but just like that of an armored flyer, they will shoot a barrage of projectiles at you at very high speeds. And there's about 15 of them per shot, so if you get hit by the entire barrage, you're going to take upwards of about 60% damage, which is quite a bit. As for its weak spots, the Nightmare Scout will have a 2 times damage multiplier if you hit it to the back, and a 1 times damage multiplier if you hit it on a tumor. First time you see these guys would be R8C1, and they show up in a few other missions afterwards. Now, dealing with the Nightmare Scout can be quite annoying, because due to their high HP and the whole tumor mechanic, technically no gun in this game can one-shot them without the use of boosters, because even the sniper rifle can't kill them in one hit. If you shoot a Nightmare Scout to the back tumor for the damage multiplier and the precision multiplier, you're going to do 160 damage out of 161 HP. The only gun in the game that can technically one-shot a Nightmare Scout without the use of boosters would actually be the scatter gun, but in order to do it, first of all, you have to be client, that way you can actually do more damage to the tumor than just the simple 81 HP. As host, if you try this, it's not going to work at all, and you literally have to barrel stuff the scatter gun into the backside of that tumor in order for it to actually kill, which can be pretty awkward because if you get too close, you're going to touch the scout and it's going to go immune. And if you're not close enough, you're not going to hit all those pellets, in which case it is just barely going to survive and then go immune. So the safest and easiest way to deal with these guys stealthily is through the use of seafoam grenades, seafoam trip mines, or the seafoam launcher. My recommendation whenever you come across them is have a seafoam launcher and just seafoam it from a safe distance. And once you have, all four of you need to rush up on it and you need to go for the front and the back tumor at the same time. If you have a sledgehammer, a bat, or a spear, it doesn't matter which one of the two you go for. Knife people always go for that back tumor so you get that backstab multiplier, which the knife has, and you need to pop both of those tumors before it breaks out of the seafoam. The other annoying thing is if these things do manage to wake up, not only do they alert the room, spawn in a wave of enemies just like scouts do, but they're going to start walking around shooting that very dangerous barrage of projectiles at you fairly often and trying to shoot it and kill it afterwards is quite difficult because it's kind of like that of a tank. You need to get in front of it and behind it because you have to be able to hit both of those tumors to do enough damage, otherwise you're going to have to spend pretty much three times as much ammunition to actually kill it. So again, highly recommend, take your time with these guys, do your best to kill them with seafoam and do your melee hits. If they do wake up though, get behind cover, deal with all the other enemies first as they are higher threats, and then once everything is dead, split up a little bit, stay near cover, or at least stay mobile so you don't get shot by it as much, and just land your shots nice and concisely on those tumors until it finally falls over dead. It wouldn't be right if a new enemy variant didn't have a giant version of it. So say hello to the Nightmare Giant. Nightmare Giants have a total of 640 HP. They deal 40% damage with their melee and 5.55% damage with their projectiles. And their projectile is quite a bit different than any other enemy in the game as they will shoot out a total of 25 projectiles at you if they keep line of sight of you for the entire duration that is. And it kind of shoots like a slow mode laser you kind of think like a giant shooter projectile where it shoots it out towards you and moves kind of slowly and has a little bit of tracking, but just slow it down a little bit more and have a whole lot more projectiles right next to each other, and that's what the Nightmare Giant is. As for its weak spots, as a 2 times damage multiplier if you hit it from behind, and the only time the Nightmare Giant shows up is once in R8A2's secondary objective, during the alarm you have to do, and only one of them will spawn in during that alarm. As for dealing with Nightmare Giants, it's actually not all that challenging. You just simply want to kill every other enemy first, as the Nightmare Giant is a bullet sponge. So if you focus on it, then the other enemies are going to pretty easily get up to you and hit you from behind. And killing it once it's the only thing left alive is kind of like killing a tank. Split up a little bit, as you definitely want to get those back damage multiplier shots, since it has so much HP. Keep a distance so it can't melee you, but also stay near cover so the projectiles don't have an easy time of tracking in on you and actually do damage to you. And once you do all of its HP, it'll fall over to the ground dead, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Just like the Nightmare Giant, we have another enemy that's a bit unique in its appearance, and that would be the Nightmare Baby. Nightmare Babies have a total of 5 HP, they deal 4% damage to you with their tongue attack, they have a 2x damage multiplier to the back, a 2x damage multiplier to the head, and a 4x damage multiplier to the occiput. And the only time they appear in the game is, just like the Nightmare Giant, in R8A2 secondary objective. When it comes to dealing with Nightmare Babies, the technical answer is you don't, actually. 
because the only time they appear in that mission is when you finish the final full team scan, which once that one completes, it locks you inside that zone, it spawns in an immortal and a bunch of nightmare babies, and then you're just simply meant to die. The moment all four of you fall over dead, the level completes and you get your successful completion. Now, if you are playing a modded rundown or something where these guys are actually used normally and they haven't had their statistics changed, then you just treat them pretty much like normal baby strikers because they're basically the exact same. The only real difference aside from their appearance is because of that outer shell they have, it's kind of awkward to actually hit their damage multipliers, but at only 5 HP, it really doesn't matter. So yeah, if you actually want to fight against these things, I would just simply melee them if they're fast asleep in a modded rundown, or if you're in the A2 situation, just simply shoot at them and kill them as long as you want to until you inevitably fall over dead and successfully complete your mission. And last but not least, the final enemy introduced with Rundown 8, and the last one you're going to come across is the Mega Birther. You've seen Birthers, you've seen Queen Birthers, say hello to the one that tops them all. Mega Birthers have a total of 5,000 HP, and each tumor on their body has a total of 313. They do 5.55% damage per projectile, and they will shoot out a barrage of them very similar to that of a hybrid. They deal 12% damage with their tongue, and that tongue probably has the longest range of any tongue attack I've seen in this game. And when it comes to their weak spots, just like that of Birthers and Queen Birthers, you're only really going to be able to do damage to them on their tumors, which are going to have a 3 times damage multiplier. The one and only time this thing ever shows up is an R8D2, and this thing is one heck of a fight. Now, you might be looking at that HP and seeing 5,000 and thinking Queen Birthers have 2,500, so this is only two times as much. That's not too bad, right? Well, technically it's a bit more, because even though the amount of HP on these tumors is the same of that as a Queen Birther, the damage multiplier has gone down from five times to three times, which means this thing technically has 3.3 times the amount of HP as a Queen Birther. Now, thankfully, the Mega Birther does not fog up the area like crazy. It's actually the only Birther variant that can't spawn fog in the area. However, it is able to actually shoot projectiles at you and lick you with its tongue, so it has its own ways of attacking you, and even its spawning mechanic is a bit different. Instead of spawning in a lot of baby strikers and then just running away and trying to keep its distance from you, it's going to spawn in either regular baby strikers or it's going to spawn in regular strikers in small groups, but it can spawn them in quite a bit faster. I believe it only spawns in about 5 to 8 enemies at once, but I've had runs where it will spawn in a pack of baby strikers, and then within about 2 or 3 seconds it will spawn in a pack of regular strikers, and then 2 or 3 seconds later it will spawn in another pack of baby strikers. The easiest way to deal with it from my personal experience is have some people focus purely or mostly on dealing with the baby strikers and the regular strikers she spawns in, while the other people focus on her tumors. Because unlike that of birthers or queen birthers where they're all located on its chest and legs, these tumors are going to be spread out all throughout the body. There's really no two tumors that are right next to each other. So what you want to do, if you have high damage weapons like choke moth shotguns, a scatter gun, precision rifle, or sniper rifle, or anything like that, focus on popping those tumors and just going from one to the next and getting rid of it as quickly as you can. If you're somebody with things like maybe combat shotguns or pump shotties or machine guns or hell guns or hell rifles or just guns in general that are better at clearing out weaker enemies, you're going to want to focus on the regular strikers and the babies. And also because this boss has so much HP, this fight is more than likely going to go on for a little while. So I would say hold on to ammo packs and med packs and resupply yourself halfway through the wave. If you're somebody who's focusing on the enemies she spawns in and there's currently nothing to shoot, give yourself health or ammo if you need it or give it to your nearby teammates and just resupply them. But assuming you can keep the spawns down low and she's not overwhelming you with a ton of enemies, this fight overall isn't too terribly difficult if you go into it with a fair amount of resources. And also, try to stay a little bit mobile. That tongue attack, she doesn't do it too often, and if you get hit a little bit here or there by it's not too big of a deal. That projectile barrage attack, though, can do a lot of damage very quickly, so don't stand in place if you are shooting the tumors, otherwise you can end up dead pretty easily. And there you have it. All 29 enemies you can find lurking about in the darkness of the complex. Now, before anyone points it out in the comments, yes, there is technically a 30th enemy in the game. 
the infectious shooter. However, this enemy doesn't naturally spawn in any of GTFO's 83 expeditions. The only way to make them appear is to put a special secret command into a terminal, and for that reason, I decide to not cover it in this video. Although, I am working on a video that showcases all the hidden commands that 10 Chamber sneakily added into GTFO after Rundown 8's release, which, if things go according to plan, that should be the next video I release after this one. So if that's something that piques your interest, then perhaps consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you'll know exactly when that video releases and you can check it out then. As always though, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned some new things that you can utilize during your expeditions to make your runs a little more successful. If you did enjoy it, then please consider leaving a like on the video itself. It tells me you enjoy this type of content and it helps the video get noticed by other people who might be in need of its information. Until next time, good luck in your runs. I wish for you to be blessed with good scan RNG and an abundance of resource packs, and I will hopefully see all you wonderful people back in the next video.